Hola, Reis y Reinas, High Kings and Queens. I pray that today I find you excited to get activated with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you're filled with excitement, with ex filled with an excitement of expectancy in Jesus' name. If I don't find you excited, borrow some of mine in Jesus' name. May it flow through this devotional. I pray that I find you excited today on this Sunday that you're about to get your worship on in church, Bible-based church, or you've already gone and had your worship on. So God bless you. I pray that today we have great activation and that if I find you that you're, you need revival or restoration in your life in Jesus name I pray that you and I speak the name of Jesus for revival restoration healing from any sorrow any hurting I pray in the name of Jesus that he gives you this healing that he shines his face upon you that your circumstances will change in Jesus name that there is breakthrough happening right now today in Jesus name and that you have unity and peace any fear inside you will flee in the name of Jesus, any curse over your life will be broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you receive this, um, type amen or comment amen. Thank you for your time today, kings and queens. If you have a hole in your soul, a break in your heart, or a block in your mind, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that there's a great revelation. That God gives you his uncommon, unearned, unexplainable, preferential treatment of his presence, protection, prosperity, protection in Jesus name more than anything but we want his perspectives so therefore we can take on whatever's coming our way that is causing breaking in our heart that he'll heal us in Jesus name thank you for developing Lord thank you for this divine appointment that we have with you to get activated and anytime that we have intimacy with you father we thank you that Lord that you honor it in Jesus mighty name have your way Lord we are exceptionally able pre-qualified protected favored deserved pre-approved equipped and will be everything God created us to be to experience, to create, to serve, and to fulfill in Jesus' mighty name. Have your way, great God, that you are. And today we are reading from Judges 6.14, which reads, The Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go in your strength. Go in your strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am not, am I not sending you? Mm. Bring it, Holy Spirit. What I'm going to tell you is that God will give us assignments. He will give us appointments. He will give us instructions. He'll teach us. He'll guide us. He'll direct us. And a lot of times you're going to feel like I, I can't bring this to pass. I don't I don't I don't know. This just seems out of my out of my area of knowledge or whatever it is. I'm going to tell you that God has called me to do things that I have gotten frustrated. He's shown me things that have frustrated me because my reality does not look anywhere near what he says or what he has, you know, what he has shown me in his visions. Because I will tell you that when you want his power, he will be every area of power in every area of your weakness. So I feel like the more weak we are, the more enabled we are, the more we are empowered by him in Jesus name. Um, so what does it mean? It's meaning to go in the strength that you have. We're going to get into this word and learn what, who sends us, why he sends us, for what he sends us, how he sends us, and exactly for whom. So thank you, Father, for this word in Jesus' name. Here we go. The one who sends you. When the Lord chose Gideon to, to lead Israel into battle against the Midianite army, he answered, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? You can read more on this on Judges 6.15, which says, good question. He couldn't, but God could. I'm going to look up Judges 6.15 real quick um, because I didn't look it up, but I want some insight. So maybe it can give us some insight. <clears throat> so he, so what he said, well, because he did say, well, this is, so this, uh, pardon me, oh Lord, Gideon replied, is in Judges 6.15. So that will give you a great insight. Um it's carrying on 615 because we're only reading 614. Let me carry on. Bring your Holy Spirit. So it's a good question. He couldn't, but God could, the author wrote. Gideon felt inadequate and unqualified. He mentally was stuck on his limitations. Gideon wasn't even convinced that God was on his side. He thought he was alone. When we're in our head, we're dead. But God's choice to you, but God's, but God's choice was not based on Gideon's faith, his courage, his strength, or even his experiences. God chose to use him, to send him, and to work wonders through him, despite all of Gideon's shortcomings. So no matter what had, what Gideon had been through or not been through or not known or known, learned, unlearned, he it was what God saw in him. God could trust him in this area. Even though he, Gideon felt like he couldn't trust himself, the Lord could. This is why God does things based upon our hearts, not our knowledge all the time. Are you like Gideon? Are you focused on what you are not rather than who God is? 
We often think we are just being realistic or humble when we list our limitations. But contrary to what you might think, yes, you, under the sound of my voice, we actually are being prideful. Oh, fix it, Holy Spirit. Heal it, Lord. A lot of times we are things that we don't even know subconsciously. If we focus on what we cannot do or who we are not, we are really saying to God, my limitations are greater than your power and your strength. What? I mean, can you imagine when we're like, no, Lord, I can't do it. And he's like, I made you. I give you what you got. You're breathing and you're walking because I've given you the air. I've, gi- I've breathed life into you. You've gotten this far in life because I've protected you. You're alive today because I've protected you. Ooh, God is probably looking at us like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, when you feel inadequate for the assignment God gives you, choose to believe that he is faithful to do the very thing he has sent himself to do in and through your life. Fix it, Holy Spirit. We want to have, we want to look at you as all powerful. That's why I'm saying, Lord, give us your perspectives. No matter how impossible, no matter how, no matter how impossible, no matter how wonderful, period. No matter. He is greater than you. He is greater than your imperfections. He is greater than bad things that have happened to you. Thank you, Father, for your word. Today, um, today's quote is from the Holy Scriptures, heaven sent. Lift will be found for heaven. Hold on, because this one, let me see. Sorry, my my writing uh, is very hard for me to. From the Holy Scriptures, heaven sent. Heaven sent lift will be found for heaven sent duties. Mm. And Russell M. Nelson wrote that. Sorry, I messed it up in the beginning. But what it's saying is that from the Holy Scriptures, they are heaven sent. We will be lifted for the duties that we need. We will be lifted. We will be empowered. We will be healed. We will be shifted. We already have come pre-approved to do what he needs us to do. And I don't even know if he needs us to do it. I think he desires for us to do it because there's desires in our hearts and our minds that in, in our lives that we want to come to pass. You know, you keep getting into relationships. I don't know who this is for. I've been there. You keep getting into relationships and you're not qualified for that toxicity. Oh, fix it, Holy Spirit. I've noticed that he's put me in situations that, you know, people want me to not care about certain things. And I've had this mind blowing revelation. I'm like, well, Lord, why is it that it, there's so much going on here? Like I pray for them. I, I care for them. I, I want them to be who you want them to be. You know, I want them to have a peaceful, calm life. I want them to have your perspective, your prosperity. And God has shown me is that I didn't create you in a way as me where you cannot care. Some people want to have you in their lives. They want you to pray for them. They want you to help them. They want you to do anything that you can for them because maybe they have a good heart. Maybe they've been through traumas. But when you care for someone, you do hold them accountable. You do say, like, you're better than that. Like, why are you doing those things? And I've learned now that it it was crazy. I was driving one day and I was, like, crying. And I was like, Lord, like, why is there so much, like, resistance? Why is there so much friction? Why is there so much, like, everything was, like, great. And then all of a sudden, like, things have gotten, like, to a place where it's, like, there's a lot of disagreement. And God just told me, I didn't create you in a way where you can't care as me. You have a heart. You care. You love. And you do things out of the care that is what drives you is you care for others a lot of times i care for others more than i do myself and i have been convicted in areas where it's like if i don't care for myself if i continue putting others in front of me i'm not going to care for myself properly caring for yourself looks different in every season sometimes it means putting your phone on do not disturb because you have to protect your strength you have to protect your energy to go and fight the battles that God has called you to fight. Because every day there's going to be fighting battles in the spiritual world. Your praying is fighting. Your love is fighting. Your forgiveness is fighting. Bring it, Holy Spirit. Your forgiveness is assignment. To forgive people that continuously hurt you. A lot of the times God's going to tell you, okay, it's you can draw the line now. You've done what you can. Let go. Let me. Let go, let God. Letting go and letting God is also fighting a battle. A lot of the times, so I'm telling you, in different seasons, the who, the where, the what, the how, the why, they're always going to be different. But the thing that never changes is God is who sends us. The sender never changes. The fruits of his Holy Spirit, the love, the kindness, the gentleness, the charity, the chastity, generous, being generous, the peace. All of his fruits 
are what he sends us to use as tools in our assignments to be successful in bringing glory to his name. Pride will kill it. Pride will kill everything. So I pray that that blesses you. That was a beautiful word. Thank you, Father, for this word. I pray that you feel the shift in the atmosphere for August. I'm excited for August with the number eight is the eighth month of the year, which stands for new beginnings. A lot of us, um, things had to die last month and we're going through a lot of heartbreak. We're going through a lot of trauma. We're going through a lot of things that may have been painful spiritually, mentally, emotionally, even physically. Things have to die. A lot of times things get bad, get worse before they get better. So I pray that wherever it is that I find you, that you have a knowing that he sent you. And because he sent you, he has strengthened you. He has equipped you. He has pre-approved you. You are exceptionally able to fulfill what he's called you to fulfill. Don't let the enemy tell you any lie. If he tells you, be like, okay, that's your opinion. God says I'm victorious. God says that I'm wonderfully made. God says that I am a royal priesthood, that I am a queen, that I am a king. I have assignments. I'm going to take my crown right here. I'm not going to take my crown off because I'm believing the lies of the enemy. You take your crown off. You start acting like a peasant. You start behaving out of character. When you have your crown on, that's the Lord anointing you. You are anointed. Don't and I read something and I was I was making it is you if you're doing it stop doing things in fear and start doing them with your anointing when you put your crown on when you're saved and you're living the God oh mine's cracked if you're saved and you you're living for God's glory and He puts His crown on you and He's like you're a king you're a queen you're my sons and my daughters go and fulfill what I have called you to fulfill you take your crown off you start fighting with someone you start cursing at someone you start giving them a piece of your mind you're taking your crown off don't take your crowns on if you got adjusted tilt it adjust it help adjust other queen's crowns as well and i'm telling you it's not easy helping others you know putting their crowns on because a lot of times you try to adjust them you're like you're better than that fix your crown baby you're, you're better than that queen and a lot of people are like no i don't want to be better than that and i'm gonna take that to challenge in itself so i pray that the lord gives you great power and strength but i know that the lord has done that already so i'm thanking god for it but what i want you to always know is remind yourself in jesus name read his word take times reading devotionals go to a bible-based church get your worship on all of getting that worship on when you're worshiping in church it's breaking demonic spiritual warfare that is trying to go on in your mind in your body it breaks it god just your crown is adjusted I, I've, I've learned that when i'm i'm worshiping and maybe some of us do have some crowns that have been broken fix it the Lord will fix it and fix it and put it on and I'm going to go back again. I have fallen, my crown broke, but, but the Lord is going to. Every gem that we have on our crowns is from an experience that we have experienced. So I pray that this gives you great revelation, insight, and clarity, spiritual discernment of where you lean in, where you lean out. Because sometimes you got to lean into situations and you got to wear your crown. A lot of times you're going to lean into situations that you probably shouldn't and it's going to cause you to want to remove your crown and act a fool. I will tell you that yesterday... Um, I was not in San Antonio and, you know, there was these people fighting in a McDonald's, like fighting, like throwing stuff at each other. You know, somebody that worked there and a client um, that was there and it was horrible. And I was like, Lord, like I was just praying in the spirit. I was like, Lord, like I pray, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that your blood covers because we are in a world right now where people are desensitized to human life. There's so much hurt and, and, and traumas in people that their words are expressing it. Their actions are expressing it. And keep your crown on. Keep yourself covered with the blood of Jesus. And he will tell you, walk away from that. Walk away from that. It's not worth it. Trying to be right. No, walk away from that. Your life is worth more than that. A lot of people right now, they just want to take lives because you say something wrong. Or you even do something that God has called you to do. And they, they take it the wrong way. Pray for people. Even if you're passing in your car, lay your hands. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pled the blood of Jesus over that situation. I be, I, I've learned now that when I'm passing things, you know, I just, my hands are out. Like, because I'm praying, I'm praying and I'm, I'm, I'm praying the blood of Jesus over people that I don't even know. Because that's what my crown is, my assignment is to pray for those that sometimes they don't have prayer. Sometimes they don't know prayer. So I pray this blesses you. Today's prayer is, Lord, when you give me, you, us, an overwhelming assignment, may I welcome it. May you welcome it. May we welcome it as an opportunity to see your work, to be your work, to create your work, to experience your work, to serve your work. In Jesus' mighty name, you prayed that simple prayer. I pray that it blessed you. I thank God in advance. Thank you for everyone that has been subscribing, liking, praying, people from Australia. God bless you, kings and queens. I thank you for the time that you invest into trusting and hearing my word. Um, it's not my word, but to hear the word from me and God. Correction, Father. It's the Holy Spirit's word flowing through here. And I pray that his word accomplishes what he sent it to do today. 
in Jesus name. If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you want to get your crown on, you want to get your crown on, repeat after me. I have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I want your direction, your guidance in Jesus' name. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, for giving me my sins. Help me to forgive myself. And thank you for your works in my life, the past, the future, and today. I thank you for the things that you have done in our lives, in my life, that we don't even know. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you that we're alive, healthy, wealthy, and full of your power. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You pray, God. If you pray that simple prayer, put God first. You need a Holy Bible. You need a daily devotional. Reach out to me. I will get you on Godspeed. Any prayer requests, inbox me. Thank you for your times, kings and queens. Reign responsibly. Steward responsibly. Remember that who sends you, hold yourself accountable. Obey responsibly. In Jesus' name, um, kings and queens, don't let anyone allow you to take. Don't, don't make anyone make you take your crown off. That's abandoning your assignment. May the fruits of the Holy Spirit flow through you and empower you to know he sent you. So he is creating a way for you, opening doors that no man can open and closing doors that no man can shut. That no man, closing doors that no man can open. Amen. The doors that he opens, no man can open. Only he can open those doors. So I speak the name in Jesus that you have healing, revelation, insight, clarity, knowledge beyond your years of age. And insight and spiritual discernment of where to lean in and where to lean out. Whoever it is that God has laid in your heart to share this video, whoever it is he's prompting your spirit, please share. Be obedient. That's reigning responsibly um, over your territory, over your community, over your family, your employees, your fellow students, your children, your children's children. Whoever it is that God has laid in your heart to share with, please be obedient. And remember that God is at work. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.